home of the world's worst weather. So reads the inscription on the sign hanging at the entrance to the meteorological station on Mount Washington, USA. Indeed, you wouldn't even wish living in this place on your worst enemy. In 1934, a record wind speed was recorded at Mount Washington, 321 kilometers or 199 miles an hour, slightly less than inside a tornado. In 2004, the coldest wind chill temperature recorded was minus 75 degrees Celsius. That's minus 103 Fahrenheit. But can this really be considered the worst weather in the world? If by world we mean the whole universe, or at least the solar system, then there are certainly places with worse weather. For example, Jupiter. What would happen if we experienced the weather conditions from Jupiter here on Earth for just 10 seconds? To achieve this kind of weather, we'd need to first make our planet more like Jupiter. First of all, for this, you need to remove most of the chemical elements and leave basically just hydrogen and helium. True, the amount of these gases on Earth in comparison with Jupiter is quite small. Therefore, it'd be necessary to scrounge up all we can from across the universe and gather up a mixture of hydrogen and helium equal to about 318 terrestrial masses in order to get anywhere close to the mass of the gas giant. As a result, all the collected atoms of hydrogen and helium would begin to become attracted to each other so they would condense and shrink. This process, though, could take millions of years. So we'll fast forward a little bit so that Earthlings can fully appreciate Jupiter's weather conditions for 10 seconds. So, now we have a new Earth with much higher gravity. Therefore, if your weight is now about 70 kilograms or 154 pounds, under the new gravity conditions, it would increase to 161 kilograms or 355 pounds. But believe me, this is not the worst thing that will happen in the next 10 seconds. When you find out what else, you'll fall down and collapse, literally, because there's nothing more to stand on. After all, the surface of the Earth, in the form that we're used to feeling under our feet, simply ceases to exist. Instead, only different states of hydrogen will remain. In the upper atmosphere, it will float in the form of gas, and just below, whole oceans are formed from liquid hydrogen. At a depth of 40,234 kilometers, or 25,000 miles, it will compress so strongly that it will become harder and denser than rock, turning into so-called metallic hydrogen. It's formed due to high pressure, which is because of the huge mass of the planet. A large mass, in turn, entails two more unpleasant surprises. The accelerated rotation of the planet around its axis and a much higher temperature. As for the latter, the temperature will become incredibly diverse. The core will be a hellish 35,700 degrees Celsius. That's 64,292 Fahrenheit. This is almost seven times hotter than the sun it will be a little cooler at the point where hydrogen changes from a gas into a liquid, 6,000 degrees Celsius or 10,832 Fahrenheit. True, it's unlikely you'll have time to feel this excruciating heat. Indeed, before you reach it, high pressure will crush you into a pancake. If you find yourself in the upper atmosphere, then instead of hellish heat, there will be a bitter cold minus 145 Celsius or 229 Fahrenheit. However, being in the cold will not last long, as you'll immediately fall and meet the warm air currents flowing upward from the center of the planet. These currents, together with the accelerated rotation of the planet, will also force the atmosphere to move. So you'll have to withstand a powerful wind rushing at a speed of 140 meters or 459 feet per second. This is almost two times stronger than the highest recorded wind near the home of the world's worst weather on Mount Washington. 
After just 10 seconds in the Jovian Hurricane, you'll be almost a mile from your original location. Another scenario is that you'll be sucked into a tornado, which will be whirling at a speed of 135 meters or 443 feet per second. This is the usual speed of a tornado here on Earth, but now they'll cover the entire surface of the planet. Perhaps the most noticeable change that you'll see in the first seconds is the lack of oxygen, the obvious result of which is that everyone will suffocate. But this may not happen in such a short time, since our lungs will be able to tolerate asphyxiation for an extra 10 seconds. But it will be plenty of time for other dangers. So, all the cars on the planet will stop abruptly and break down, while the planes will fall right out of the sky on the heads of the stunned people below, because all internal combustion engines will simply stop working. Following suit, most buildings on the planet will collapse, as oxygen is the main element helping concrete to maintain its structure. Although it will probably not be possible to see it with your own eyes, the sky will become completely black and there will be nothing more to reflect the sun's rays. Oxygen was making this possible before as well. Next, the air pressure will change so quickly and dramatically that your eardrums will burst almost immediately. This has its advantages. Now you'll not have to listen to the suffering screams of the people all around you. After all, nothing can fry us more and better than cosmic radiation, and this will happen because the ozone layer will also disappear. Given that the Earth is much closer to the Sun than Jupiter, the radiation exposure will be several times stronger. Therefore, after the passage of these 10 seconds of hell, there will be hardly any form of life left on Earth. Even the most resistant to extreme conditions will be affected. But then there will be no more clever men who ask questions like, what if we create the weather conditions of Jupiter on Earth? Fortunately for us, such an event in reality does not threaten us. To have the weather conditions of Jupiter, the Earth must first at least become like it. In theory, gas giants may eventually become Earth-like planets, but the reverse transformation is impossible, at least in our universe. Nevertheless, Jupiter, along with Venus, from time to time, are still trying to ruin Earth's climate. Scientists note that the orbits of these planets have affected our weather for at least the last 215 million years. Every 405,000 years, gravitational oscillations between Earth, Venus and Jupiter bring us abnormally cold winters and very hot summers. Droughts are unusually strong and the rains cause severe floods. Researchers claim that we are now somewhere in the middle of this cycle. It's probably already time to think about protection in case other planets again decide to interfere with our earthly life. Or maybe NASA should develop a plan to destroy Jupiter and Venus. Then we'll get rid of their influence on our climate, but at the same time, we'll get a lot of other problems more serious than the abnormal heat or cold. But I'll already be discussing these problems in one of our upcoming releases. In the meantime, you can go outside and take a walk in the nice weather. It doesn't matter where you are watching this video now, whether it's the northern cities of Alaska or equatorial Africa, compared to other places in the universe, the weather on Earth is always good. If heavy rain, snow, heat or frost sometimes ruin your plans, don't worry. Just remember this video and how your life would be on Jupiter right now. That's all for now and thank you for your attention. If you have similar crazy ideas like the one we just talked about, write them in the comments. Those that collect the most likes or just seem really interesting will become the topic of one of our future episodes. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already done so. And don't forget to click on the bell to enable notifications about the release of new videos. And stay with us, there are still a lot more interesting videos ahead. 
And don't forget to recommend us to your friends. Science is more fun together.